You know what? Every so often, I need to take a break from religion. And so today, we're going to be dealing with PragerU, who normally talks about religion, but this time, we're going to be looking at how they deal with politics. The goal here is simple. Simply illustrate just how uneducated they are when they talk about education. The left argues that teachers, not parents, should control the curriculum of schools because they are the professionals. Well, they are teachers, CJ. In practice, this means teaching what teachers' unions want taught. Everything from race-based education, to sex education, to sexual identity, from their point of view. Oh yes, we're gonna get into the left's wicked teachings on diversity, but we're gonna have to get there through a giant straw man. Both the left and the right believe in the importance of education, but where they disagree is how to deliver it best. For starters, those on the left believe that the government should pay for a person's entire education, which means that the cost should be shared by everyone through taxation. There is already a lot to say. The statement that the left believes the government should pay for a person's entire education is a sweeping generalization that fails to capture the diversity of views within the left or the complexities of educational funding. While it's true that many on the left support robust public funding for education, very few argue that the government should cover all educational expenses from cradle to college. In other words, this is a straw man from PragerU. Shock horror, right? What the left generally advocates for is a strong, well-funded public education system that provides quality schooling for all children, regardless of their family's socioeconomic status. They see this as a core responsibility of the government and a wise investment in the nation's future. The argument is that education is a public good that benefits the whole of society by creating informed citizens, fostering social mobility, and producing a skilled workforce. As such, it should be primarily funded through taxation, with the cost shared by all. However, this doesn't preclude the existence of private schools or mean the left opposes any private spending on education. Again, this is one-dimensional propaganda from Prager. Many on the left are absolutely fine with parents choosing to pay for private schools if they wish. The key is that they don't want children's access to quality education to be determined by their parents' ability to pay. And when it comes to higher education, there is even more diversity of views on the left. Some do support making public colleges and universities tuition-free, arguing that post-secondary education is increasingly necessary for economic success and so therefore should be accessible to all. Others, though, propose more modest measures like increasing financial aid, lowering interest rates on student loans, or free community college. But even among those who advocate for free college, Few suggest that the government should cover all expenses, like room, board, and books, and most of the left are comfortable with private colleges continuing to charge tuition, as long as there are strong public options available. So, in summary, characterising the left as believing the government should pay for all education is a straw man. The core principle is that quality education should be a public good, accessible to all, regardless of wealth. But the specifics of how to achieve that goal, through a mix of public and private funding, are subject to a wide range of views and proposals on the left. Anyhow, back to CJ. For the right, the problem with this is that whoever pays controls. That is a rule of life. If parents want to be the ones who decide how their children should be educated, parents should be more directly involved in how schools are funded. If the government pays for a child's education, it will inevitably control that child's education. Once again, there is a lot to unpack here. Let's start with the idea of whoever pays controls. This statement reflects a common concern on the right about government overreach in education. The fear is that if schools are entirely dependent on government funding, they will be beholden to government dictates on what and how to teach, limiting parents' ability to shape their children's education. However, this view relies on a very simplified understanding of how public education works in practice. While it's true that government funding comes with certain strings attached, such as a requirement to meet state academic standards or to serve all students equally, it's an exaggeration to say that this amounts to total government control. In reality, public schools in the US are governed at the local level by elected school boards, which are directly accountable to the communities they serve. These boards, composed of parents and community members, have significant significant authority over budget allocations, curriculum choices, and school policies. This allows for local values and priorities to shape education. Moreover, the idea that parents can only have a say in their children's education if they directly fund it is wrong. 
it's just wrong. First, it pays to remember who puts the government in charge. That's right, the voters do, which includes parents. Second, this view privileges wealthy families who can afford to pay out of pocket for private schools or homeschooling over lower and middle income families who rely on public schools. Hence, it maintains that only affluent parents have the right to influence their children's education, perpetuating a system of inequality. Now, this isn't to say that there aren't valid concerns about government influence on education, of course there are. Debates over issues like common core standards, testing requirements, and funding equity show that there are important discussions to be had about the proper role of government in schools, and parents should absolutely advocate for their children's needs and hold schools accountable. Contrary to what Prager would have you believe, the boogeyman left doesn't say otherwise. Case in point, the blanket assertion that government funding equals government control is ironically the result of a lack of education. It ignores the many checks and balances in the system that prevent any one entity, including the government, from having unilateral control over schools, and it discounts the ability of parents and communities to shape public education through democratic processes, regardless of their financial means. Oh, and one more note, even when Trump and the Republicans held power in the government, they were still bitching about leftist agenda in schools, weren't they? So clearly, the government doesn't have control, does it? The left argues that teachers, not parents, should control the curriculum of schools because they are the professionals. In practice, this means teaching what teachers' unions want taught. Everything from race-based education, to sex education, to sexual identity, from their point of view. More fear-mongering, huh? It's true that teachers' unions, which are often aligned with the left politically, advocate for teachers to have a strong voice in curriculum decisions, and they do so for the same reason that we want architects to have a strong say on public buildings. I know. What a radical ideology. Teachers, by virtue of their training and classroom experience, have specialist knowledge about child development, learning styles, and effective teaching strategies. They're also intimately familiar with the needs and abilities of their particular students. Thus, many on the left argue that teachers' professional judgment should be respected and they should have significant autonomy in how they teach. However, this is not the same as arguing that teachers should completely control the curriculum or that parents should have no say whatsoever. Instead, most on the left argue for a collaborative approach to curriculum development that includes the input of various stakeholders teachers, administrators, educational experts, parents, and even students. The idea is that each group brings valuable perspectives and expertise to the table. The left's perspective, then, is not about granting blue-haired teachers the right to ignore family input, but rather it's about recognising teachers as key contributors to a collective effort to develop curricula that are educationally sound and reflective of community values. And of course, should teachers deliberately subvert the curriculum for any reason, including personal politics, many on the left are going to have more than a few words to say about this. But what about the scary topics that CJ brought up? Race, sexuality, and identity. To Prager use great dismay, they need to be taught in ways that are fact-based and appropriate for students' developmental stages, aiming to equip them for a life in a diverse society. We've tried Prager's dream of teaching that only heterosexual people exist, and that everyone is where they are in life solely because of their own merit. And it doesn't work. Because it's not true. Those on the right believe that parents, not teachers, are the most important figures in a child's life. And the left agrees that parental figures are the most important in a child's life. Again, this is a straw man. It's so obviously a straw man, in fact, that I'm not entirely sure how any of Prager's audience take this seriously. Parents know better than anyone what their children need to learn and to thrive. But do they? In all cases, are you sure? How does this work? Is it that once you have a child, all of a sudden you become an expert in psychology, nutrition, and everything else? Come on, my dude. Surely even the students at Prager University know that this is bullshit. The right believes that the best way to improve schools is to introduce competition. This is the idea behind school choice. That parents should have the ability to send their kids to whatever school they choose, and that their tax dollars should follow their child and not the other way around. 
While the right wants school choice, the left opposes it. Does CJ know about the Jim Crow era? Or, ironically enough, has Prager been sure to prevent CJ from learning such lessons? During the Jim Crow period, which lasted from the late 19th century to the 1960s, racial segregation was legally enforced in many parts of the United States, particularly in the South. This included the segregation of public schools, with black students often relegated to underfunded inferior schools. In this context, the the concept of school choice was sometimes used as a tool to maintain segregation. After the Supreme Court's Brown v. Board on Education decision in 1954, which declared school segregation unconstitutional, some states and localities tried to circumnavigate integration by closing public schools and offering vouchers for white students to attend private, segregated schools. This allowed segregation to continue under the guise of, get this, parental choice. And you know what? This history informs much of the American left's skepticism towards the forms of school choice that CJ is encouraging. They can see that the laissez-faire capitalist situation put forward will lead to de facto segregation, with more privileged families opting out of the public system, leaving marginalised students in underfunded public schools. And even if the segregation isn't drawn on racial lines, that is, even if there's been enough time for equality to take grip in the US, it would nevertheless occur along other lines, be it wealth, religion, or political lines. You know, here's a lesson you won't learn from Daddy Prager, CJ. Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Well, there you have it, my fellow apes. Every so often I need a complete break from religion, and that is what I've done. Here, goodness me, I need to be able to create a lot more videos to be able to deal with even the smallest amount of fucking shit on the internet.